Olá, bom dia. Carl Munson here with the Good Morning Portugal live stream YouTube channel and podcast. How are you? How was your uh, fim de semana? Uh, your weekend in Portugal or your weekend plans trying to get to Portugal? Uh, do let me know in the comments. It's becoming a bit of a thing, I think, for us. Let me just turn my mic up a bit. All the set I cleaned up the studio and all the settings are everywhere. Goodness knows. Maybe I'll be coming out with lots of reverb or something like that. Do let me know um, if everything is sounding okay, if you will. Uh, you are my executive producers, uh, the Good Morning Portugal and Expats Portugal communities. And um, we'll have a slightly um, easygoing Monday with, with a bit of a serious subject in the news, uh, which is a national strategy, would you believe, to combat corruption and save 18.2 billion a year. And this is what's been approved ahead of the whistleblower trial. The um, notable whistleblower, uh, Rui Pinto, who I will tell you more about later on. And this is a heavy news story in a way, but I think it's fascinating and uh, worthy of uh, a little bit of a, an investigation a little bit later on. But, but of course, first of all, we'll do news and uh, sorry, we'll do the weather. And uh, we in the comments, please do tell me what you've been up to this weekend. The Good Morning Portugal Wine Club, the wine ninjas thereof, the elite squad of the Good Morning Portugal Wine Club met up last evening in Coimbra. And you'll have seen on the starter screen there, a uh, wonderful Paolo of Acompanheza. In fact, let me just put it on the screen now. Um, this is uh, Palavra do Dia is Camponesa. And um, you can look it up, actually. Um, if, if you want to, um, because we are doing a, a Palavra do Dia uh, every weekday now. We're building our vocabulary. We're moving towards learning the language uh, more effectively and with a little bit of fun in the mix there. So I do a, a word of the day every day to help you build your vocabulary. And of course, we'll keep bringing on those guests who help us speak Portuguese as well. But um, we were with the at the establishment called A Camponesa. Uh, with the with host Paolo, and we tried four wines and a port wine, uh, and what a wonderful evening it was in Coimbra. And that that to me, you know, we talk about this uh, perfect Portuguese moment. Well, for me, that was one of them. Uh, when when we were sat there tasting Portuguese wines, uh, being being educated by Paolo. Uh, with great company. It's a beautiful city, Coimbra. If you haven't been, do please go. Um, it was just like, yes, this is it. This is why I came to Portugal. Uh, and that is what I did at the weekend. Well, it was what I did last night. Uh, tell you more about that in a little while. Please tell me what you've been up to as well. Uh, bon dia, Carl, from a very wet and miserable <laughs> Manchester. Uh, Claire and Steve. That's how I imagine it, unfortunately. I used to live in Sheffield for quite a long time, on the other side of the Pennines. And we all know about that sort of rivalry. Uh, my memories of Manchester are often were often drizzly, popping across there to Affleck Palace. Is that still there? Is that where um, uh, young folks get themselves kitted out with clobber these days? Um, yeah, gosh, that's going back. Affleck Palace uh, in Manchester. But good morning to you, Claire and Steve. Um, I, I, it does seem a little bit muted and quite a bit breezy here. Actually, let's have a look at the weather now. But uh, breezy where I am. But yeah, a slightly easygoing uh, Monday morning after. Um, an evening of um, conviviality uh, involving not a lot of wine, but enough. Um, uh, how, was, how, was, how was it for you? I mean, the rest of my weekend was pottering about the homestead, actually. What I really love doing, the chickens are continuing to, to lay, or one of them is. She's got off to a cracking start, no pun intended there. Um, and she seems to be producing two eggs a day in a little box she's found for herself, a little nest she's made. Um, pottering about the homestead, doing a few DIY jobs, Really lovely, and to me, that's that's what I came to Portugal for as well. It's just to live an easygoing life, walking about with a you know power drill and a pencil behind me here. Did it mulched a few things up um, after I'd sorted the electrics out. But yeah, a really lovely weekend, uh, culminating in that meet up with the wine club in, in um, Coimbra last night. So the, the, let's start there. Coimbra weather: nineteen degrees at the moment, thirty-five to look forward to. It's, it's, it seems to be the weather pattern we have here. So I'm just. I set up the thermometer. One of my DIY jobs was to set up the thermometer correctly for the studio. And it says the probe hanging out the window says 25 and a half uh, degrees and inside the studio, 22. So warming up nicely. I know some people's thermometers were broken <laughs> at the weekend in central Portugal. I saw one thermometer. Was it you, Gary? Your thermometer went to 50 or, or tie. And that was the limit of the... Um, <laughs> 
<laughs> when they when they made those thermometers, you know, the old it's a kind of old fashioned mer mercury thermometer, they had a capacity of fifty by the look of it, and at least one uh, around Alvaz or in central Portugal maxed out <laughs> and distressed the mercury somewhat. That that's hot, fifty in the sun. Uh, obviously magnified a little bit by the glass of the thermometer, but still, as a scorcher this weekend, um, as we are over the hill of summer, uh, moving to Otono. But this is what's lovely about Portugal again, you know, is, is the, the summer can go on and on. It certainly feels like it if you're a non-native, that the, the summer's happening well into October and November sometimes. Uh, Lisbon, 19 degrees at the moment, looking for a nice uh, high of 32 today. Oh, yeah, let me give you the, the, the outlook for the week, actually. Um, cloudy tomorrow in Lisbon, uh, sunny again on Wednesday, and then a cloudy end of week. Uh, temperature's still looking pretty good, but cloudy. Same in Porto, actually, 19 at the moment in Porto. Uh, rising to 29 to today, but a cloudy day, um, sunny day on Wednesday, and then return to, to cloudier skies for the rest of the week. Interesting. Um, yeah, so a, a week for quite a good week for grape harvesting, which is what it's all about at the moment uh, here in Portugal, it would seem. Um, so mercifully, uh, a bit of cloud cover to, to, for those folks who are out in the sun picking up, uh, picking up the grapes and harvesting the grapes. Uh, Coimbra, we've done Faro, 21 degrees at the moment, 27 to look forward to, and a cloudy week, actually. Uh, Tuesday right through to Sunday, looking cloudy, but still. Um, temperatures ranging from 25 to 27 in Faro. If you want the weather anywhere else in the country, for example, where have, where have we not had a look for a little while? Santarém, 19 degrees at the moment, 36 to look forward to. Uh, that's for you Tomartians. Uh, 36 today, uh, 19 at the moment in Santarang. And then uh, even more obscure weather. Let's go to Porto Alegre. Not obscure, obviously, if you live there, but 21 degrees. A part of Portugal we don't hear a great deal about, but 21 degrees at the moment and 34 degrees to look forward to today. But the, the picture is similar. A cloudier week right across Portugal today. So still very grateful for your weather, your on-the-spot weather reporting. Uh, so do let me know how it's going where you are. And a few people have checked in to say good morning. Uh, Anna Lucia, good morning to you, Anna Lucia. Love to see your face uh, looking out of your profile pic there. Morning, morning, uh, says Anna Lucia. How's it going for you? Uh, Frank, bon dia a todos, uh, who was, of course, part of the Good Morning Portugal Wine Club, Wine Ninjas Elite Squad last night out in Coimbra. Great to meet you in the, in the flesh, Frank. And I hope this is one of the the beginning of many such meetups. It was so nice after months of knowing people as avatars and digital um, presences that we got to meet in the um, in 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 person. Absolutely wonderful, uh, and um, they were just they were just like they are on Facebook, but bigger, all all, all bigger and bolder and more brilliant in in person. Uh, Ferry Westphal, good morning, Carl. Had five guests in the last three weeks. Didn't have time to listen to the show. Three weeks. Uh, uh, saying in Holland, guests and fish. <laughs> yes, this is a good one, isn't it? <laughs> and you, you being in the hospitality business, might know this better than anybody. Uh, guests and fish stay fresh for only three days. <laughs> um, and, and good morning to you, Ferry. Great to have you have you with us. Having a little bit of a, a respite and a break from the. Um, from the guests by the sound of it and um i was told as well um a little bird told me that you are an expert safety man uh you you've firmly grasped the, the um custom of taking a kip in the afternoon right um tell us more about uh you, you know do you just get in your favorite chair or do you have a nice little aguadente beforehand whatever a massive lunch and then a kip um great to have you back ferry and um yeah i'm sure you've got more to tell us about the guests you've had or your your afternoon sleeping style. Uh, Feliz Segundo. Todos. Very good, Neil. Remembering that we speak Portuguese here and we mix it up. So, uh, of course, Segunda, Tuesday, uh, Monday, the second day of the week, what I'm talking about. Yes, there we go again. Second day of the week, When as I was brought up, of course, it's Tuesday. That's why I nearly said Tuesday. But Segunda, of course, uh, in, in a religious country, first day is Sunday. Segunda, second day is Monday. So, Feliz Segunda from Neil, happy Monday, that would be to everybody. Thanks, Neil. And we missed you, man. We missed you at the wine tasting. Hopefully we can uh, meet up again and do, do, or do another meeting soon, either in Porto or down your way, Alentejo, wherever, uh, so that we can have an even bigger group and even more fun 
um, if that's possible. Uh, Gary Austin, yes, it was you, wasn't it? Um, your digital seaweed wilted um, yesterday or over the weekend. Um, yeah, crazy, crazy temperatures. Um, not unusual, though, right, in your part of the country. Um, I'm, I'm thinking, Gary, great to see you as well. Uh, you and Linda last night in Coimbra, absolutely wonderful. Uh, Joe Johnson, a quiet weekend for us. Yes, we're checking in in case you, you arrived a little bit late to the party this morning. Um, Monday seems to be a really nice uh, moment to say what you've been doing over the weekend and give folks a, an idea of um, your life in Portugal uh, when it comes to the weekend. And I know a lot of you, um, it, your life is a permanent weekend as well, but uh, your friend de semana, uh, how's it been in Portugal? Quiet weekend for us, says Joe. A potter around Ancien Market, bit of work on the garden and a float in my pool uh, was my thermometer that exploded. That's amazing, isn't it? Thermometer exploding temperatures. And it was Joe. Mystery solved there. Uh, sounds like you had a lovely weekend, Joe. Uh, Sean Maguire. Bon dear, my dear. Good morning to you as well, Sean. Uh, great to have your company this morning. So enjoyed last night. Perfect. Looking forward to greeting new members. Yeah, okay. So, yeah, in terms of new members for the Good Morning Portugal Wine Club, Join us uh, in the community group. We have a Facebook group where we share our tasting notes. Uh, and for those seriously committed folks, we, have a, we now have a wine ninjas group uh, where we, we're the people who you, you see in the supermarket taking pictures of the wine and circulating those pictures among our, our tribe. Um, and uh, yeah, we, it was those, it was the inner circle. Well, most of them, not all of them, obviously, Neil, a notable exception. And of course, Henry and Nina, who are back in the UK. Uh, but everyone hopefully getting together and, and, and for more such meetings. Uh, yes, and I would second that, Gary. Looking forward to meeting new members. And there are quite a few now um, in the in the Good Morning Portugal uh, Wine Club community. And that, of course, is a Thursday evening. Nine o'clock is when we do our wine tasting. And it is uh, hands across the uh, Atlantic on Thursday, where Lisa has gone out and bought loads of Portuguese wine in America and uh, the least we can do is find a similar wine back here in Portugal and toast and taste with her on Thursday so nine o'clock if you want to join us for the live tasting and we will announce the um, new wine for the week it's a cabrige I think but I'll I'll, um, I'll detail that and find that up in the wine club community as well uh, looking forward to Thursday again uh, as well is put the Portugal calling call the webinar this week with expats Portugal is comparing the cost of living between America and Portugal and to my shame normally with these things you know this is how they catch politicians out isn't it by asking them how much a pint of milk is you know does the politician have the common touch and do they buy their own milk even I don't know how much a pint of milk is in, uh, or a litre of milk that would be, wouldn't it, in Portugal? I don't know how much it is. I um, don't know, about a euro or something like that. But we will be comparing and contrasting the cost of living uh, between Portugal and the United States of America. And that will be the Portugal Calling webinar with Expats Portugal on Thursday of this week, 8 o'clock. Looking forward to that. And that will be first-hand testimony of a few Americans living in Portugal as well who you can talk to. So that should be fun. Uh, yeah, F Aflex Palace. Didn't expect to be talking about Aflex Palace this morning, uh, but it's still there in the middle of the developed northern quarter, a large part of Manchester that has grown into a drinking and eating village. Sounds like fun. Fab place to go now with outside tables and chairs, continental style. Yeah, I suppose it was crying out for it, really, wasn't it? When I used to go to Aflex, it was, and that was, it, that's what it was called, right? You used to go to Aflex. Um, it was, a, it did seem a slightly grungy part of town. And that was a slightly grungy market in the grungy part of town. Well, I say, let me just um, have a little sip of my British tea, if I may. Just one moment. Bear with me. <clears throat> I didn't. Un I don't think I unmuted my mic when I meant to there. So I am back now. Morning, says Valerie from Spencer Bakes. I spent a weekend swearing at my computer, cursing the back end of the system because it had a glitch, uploading photos that then somehow changed to another photo. Busy, 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 but loving it. Beautiful sunshine and blue skies. So all good except my swear. <laughs> my swear jar is getting full. Um, 
I think that'd be really, you know, it's, it's, it's quite funny, isn't it, when people swear? And I imagine it, 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 you'll be one of those people, Valerie, where it's a little bit funny as well when you when you start effing and jeffing uh, and having to fill up the swear jar. Uh, on the run this morning again, enjoy. Well, have a great day. Bon dia to you, Valerie at Spencer Beck's there. Another busy day um, selling houses. Uh, milk, 69 cents, I think, roughly. Well done, Joe. Thank you for, for saving me there. And um, we'll find out more about the cost of living in Portugal on Thursday, of course. Um, we spent a weekend helping colleagues gardening and cleaning our local community pub, which has finally decided to open next weekend. What a lovely idea. Community pub. Uh, giving Steve a saw in the garden might not have been a good idea as it's now bare. Yeah, blokes tend to take this approach, don't they, in the garden? Sort of, you get, you get going. And I mean, I was doing this with my chipper mulching machine anything i get my hands on us chucking in there uh, can't wait for that first pint uh, in this wet neighborhood um a wet in every sense by next weekend by the sound of it so yes that's a thing isn't it a phenomenon in um uh, in, in the uk the community pub, where pubs are closing because they're not profitable from a corporate point of view the community are taking over and it sounds like you're doing that there um which is coming full circle i guess with um portugal where the you know the community cafe i suppose never went away um had a hot weekend of barbecues, uh, meeting new neighbours, trying a new restaurant and choosing a place up north to spend a couple of weeks on the coast. Pete, sounds interesting. Costa Verde, the green coast, the little known uh, green coast in Portugal. I really want to pop up there as well. And I, I, that you're, you're the, I don't know, it's quite a few folks who've been telling me about the north of Portugal just recently. And I have a yearning, an inkling to um, head north and do a bit more exploration up there. So, yeah, by all means, this morning, folks, chuck in your recommendations for the north of Portugal as well. That's what we're all about here is, you know, the recommendations and the education and just finding out more about the Portuguese culture, of course. So uh, did you choose? Did, dare you say? Um, but that doesn't surprise me. Hot weekend of barbecues, meeting new neighbours uh, and trying a new restaurant in your part of central Portugal there, Pete. Um, so let me tell you more then about this wonderful um, trip, this visit to Coimbra last night. Uh, for me, uh, I don't use a car in Portugal. I, if, if I do use a car, um, it's a borrowed one uh, or a hire car. So, yeah, a borrowed one or a borrowed one, basically. And I like to use the trains. And uh, I'm talking of, you know, per perfect Portuguese moments. Uh, there I was cycling to the station last night, uh, jumping on the Linha de Norte, the um, northern line of Portugal, train to Coimbra, five minutes to Acamponesa, uh, which is our word of the day. Now, let me share a picture of this wonderful place with you. This is coming from uh, TripAdvisor. Where, where is it? Um, I think this is it. No, that's not it. <laughs> um that's just my that's just my uh, browser you, you don't need to see that do you um let me see now come on Cole, get a grip I, I, I had it all set up earlier on maybe the port did hit me harder than i um imagined from last night here we go this should be it now trip advisor and um no it's not having it i will try one more time um but i can't i can't keep putting you through this can i um, wetting your appetite with a lovely wine shopping. Oh, there we go. La Camponesa. Uh, wonderful host, Paolo. And check out this interior if it ever loads onto. I'm, I'm having the same problems as you, Valerie, I think, this morning. Uh, there we go. Um, that is the interior. So, you can, as you can see, proper job inside their um, wine shop. And they're all sort of laid out regionally. They're at the front of the shop, established in 1912 as a grocery store uh, downtown in the lanes of Coimbra. Uh, thank you to whoever put these photos up. Oh, is that the upstairs? Did, we didn't go there. Or is this just, is this Paolo's house that we're looking at now? Um, look, a tasting inside there. Look, this is, this is by the end of the evening, this is what, where we were in the, you know, the, what is that, sodium lighting of Coimbra, sat out there on the Calzada in the piazza. There was a choir rehearsing. And we had this beautiful procession. We started off with a, a Vigna Verde, uh, then a white from the Douro, and then the red from, where was the red? The, the third red, I can't remember. The fourth red was Luis, a Luis Pato from Bayrada, and then a vintage port to finish with. I can't recommend this enough, uh, strongly enough to you. Um, you know, obviously, you, 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 would, you would need and want to be a wine drinker for this experience. But Paolo is, is a most wonderful host. 
Um, and I think there's Carlos there is, is another partner in the business who is similarly capable and hospitable. And they'll take you on a little wine tour, tell you all about it. Uh, Paolo had this incredible sense of humor, um, very sort of modest chap, uh, incredibly funny and incredibly knowledgeable, which is really what you want, right, uh, in that situation. And then time came um, after hanging out with my wine club buddies there uh, and, and went to the railway station a few minutes back, walking through Coimbra, loving Coimbra, on the train. And then I cycled home uh, with the moon on the horizon, cycled on the back way, you know, to keep off the main road. I live quite near the IC2, the main route. I don't want to be on there with all the juggernauts. So I'm cycling on the back lanes home from Korea Station, down the avenue, all the plane trees in Korea. I'm cycling on the back lane to get home. And there, the moon, like a three-quarter moon, low on the horizon. Is that Mars next to the moon at the moment? And again, yes, this is why I'm here in Portugal. Absolutely fabulous. Um, yeah, got home on, on the... On, just, you know, came in, sat on the sofa next to Mrs. M. Beautiful evening in Coimbra. Uh, absolutely lovely. And that's still that warm glow from the vintage port. Um, which was absolutely wonderful. So, you know, not not drunk, not didn't overdo it, but just co continental drinking. You know, that's the transition some of us Brits have to make from bin binging Brits into, you know, continental drinkers that savour um, the booze. And that's why they can drink all day, you know, <laughs> because they take they take it easy and they enjoy it. And, and sometimes, you know, people do seem to drink all day here without getting, you know, leery or out of hand, as, we, as some of us are used to in our countries of origin. So an absolutely super day uh, and a lovely end to the weekend for me. So I've got to recommend that to you. Uh, a Camponesa. Uh, so to, to elaborate on the palavra de dia, the word of the day, Camponesa, um, the, the word means peasant um, or to country folk or country girl, country bumpkin, country woman, kind of means rural. Um, it even says on my um, a translation source here, serving wench uh, or paysan. And it was funny because when we were talking to Paolo, I said, what does that mean? Does that mean from like the field, like Campo? Uh, and he said, yes, it kind of means, you know, like countryfied, rural, but in a good way. And of course, you know, the association with the word peasant is, is, is sometimes not a good one. For me, it's entirely romantic. Uh, and, and again, you know, conveys and, and says all I want to engage with, um, with, with Portuguese life, you know, central Portugal and the connection to the land. So for me, Camponese is, is a beautiful word. Uh, summing up a beautiful sentiment. So that's our word of the day, Camponese. I will be testing you later in the week on these words. And if you have a, a word or a phrase yourself uh, for Portuguese for the Palavra de Dia, uh, let me know. Uh, and I will feature it um, as well as those photos. Keep those photos coming in. Got some crackers for Good Evening Portugal as well. Oh, talking of which, tonight it's the radio show uh, from 10 o'clock this evening. And it's a, it, we, we, we've kind of branded it in a new way that seems to make sense to a few people who are joining that group, the Portugal playlist. The theme is the same, which is basically your music that you listen to uh, while you were planning your trip here, while you were driving here, and of course the music that you've come to know and love whilst living here in Portugal. So we'll be, we'll be setting out with that theme on that musical adventure tonight from 10 o'clock, and the link to that will of course be on the Good Morning Portugal page um so it won't be a live stream that all got too complicated last week um so i will just put a link to the radio technology so you, it's an online radio show with a link just click on the url and then you can tune in and you can send me your tune send them in now if you want the music that you love that you associate with your adventure coming planning your journey to portugal your adventure in portugal actually driving you know on first time into the country what were you listening to and what have you learned about portuguese music or what do you listen to now in portugal Send me those tunes, folks. Uh, would love to hear those. And uh, bon dia from uh, Sunny. Uh, I am in a Zoom meeting, so we'll watch later. Hope everyone had a fab weekend. Love it that you're in a Zoom meeting, but you're talking to us as well. <laughs> that makes us lot feel special. <laughs> I think that you're um, meant to be working, right, on Zoom. But there you are, uh, defecting into the Good Morning Portugal live stream as well. Fantastic. Oh, a bit of uh, cross-talk in the community. Always love to see that. That's fantastic. Uh, Ty and Valerie there. Um, I suspect you may have bought a, a home from Valerie, Ty. Uh, hola, bon dia. Late this morning, seven kittens with mother in the garden. Oh, my goodness. So more um, pet pictures. I don't know if you would call them pets yet, Owen, but uh, good morning to you, mate. And obviously doing your bit out in the garden looking after seven kittens. 
with, with their mum in the garden housed in a wine barrel. That's very photogenic. That's a real oh moment, isn't it? So yeah, please photo of those of that uh, new your new family out there uh, on the Happy Homesteaders group, please, mate. So nice watching them play. How wonderful! Yes, photo, please. And bon dia. Is it Camponese with a Z or Camponese with an S? Good question, Jenny. Great to have you this morning. Um, uh, <laughs> I've just seen Eloise's message. That's good news. I'll come to that in just a moment. Um, it is Camponese with an S, strictly speaking, um, to mean rural or peasant or paysan. Uh, and it, it, it was a kind of stylization, I believe, for the, the um, wine shop that we were at last night. So the wine shop, if you want to go to Coimbra and, 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 and meet Paolo and Carlos and have that experience, it's a Camponese uh, with a Z. And our word of the day uh, meaning countryfied, rural, sometimes serving wench, uh, Camponese with an S. Okay, yes, very attentive. Top student, Jani, there. Uh, what a beautiful evening, says Eloise, um, our wine tasting leader on our adventure among the Portuguese wines on a Thursday evening. What a beautiful evening. I have eight euros change for you too, Carl. That's two bottles of wine. <laughs> Excuse me, let me just uh, have another... That is great news. Eight euros change for me. I'll put that. Shall I put that in the kitty for next time? Um, so, yes, I'm talking of northern Portugal, we are thinking, I love it, Pete. You're so open and generous with your intel. Uh, we're thinking of returning to the village of Coreso, uh, just north of Viana de Castelo. Yeah, VDC, got to go there. Uh, beautiful, rocky coastline, big rivers and great food and drink. Sounds like a really good tip there, folks, from Pete. Pete knows his Portugal. Um, so worth writing that down or sticking it on your your a, a mental note of where to go there. And is that the, what's called the um, Costa Verde up there? I've seen some beautiful photographs of, of that uh, part of Portugal. Thanks for the tip, Pete. OK, um, let's slowly sort of conclude the show. And I recognize that this, you know, we might um, lose <laughs> lose a few listeners or viewers this morning because we're talking about corruption. Um, oh, actually, before we go to, to corruption and the – oh, Mrs. M's here. I'm having pizza for breakfast this morning, um, everybody. Oh, the other thing that happened to me this weekend is I got stung by a wasp. I'll show you my swollen hand if you're lucky in a minute. Thank you for that. Um, pizza with hot sauce, fantastic. Yeah, before we go to the, the corruption article uh, and a national strategy to combat corruption and save $18.2 billion, that's what it's worth. Um, let's just c uh, catch that comment from uh, Gary there. Um, had a little chat with Paolo about Coimbra and Lisbon Fado and the differences. Yes, that was another excellent part of our evening, wasn't it? Coimbra seems to hold to the more traditional and Lisbon encompasses innovation and evolution. This will run and run because I've heard it put the other way. And um, this is this is um, definitely city sort of sibling rivalry, isn't it? And particularly here with the with the passionate subject of Fado. And he and he played us some Fado. We of course checked him with the Queen of Fado, Amalia, but he also played us some uh, uh, some awesome um, uh, Coimbran, uh, or is it? What's the what did um, what was it that Sarah told us? Coimbrigens is that the, um, the the collective noun for people from the Coimbra, Condesia, and uh, Coimbriga, the Coimbrigens, I believe. Um, yeah, so we were treated to some awesome fado, and you know, the the port wine, the vintage port wine, the lighting, the lanes, the company, and the fado playing in the lanes there. It was just, it was so perfect. Sorry to keep going on about it. It's like, okay, Carl, you had a great evening in Portugal, you know, in, in Coimbra. Enough already, all right, with you and your wine club. But sorry, I just, I, it, was, it was kind of, you know, I was thinking, you know, how, what, 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 how do we put this? What sort of weekend did you have in Portugal? A sort of bragging rights kind of come into it a little bit, but, you know, don't want to use that term. Uh, but sometimes you can't help it. Uh, bon dia, says Alan. I drove to Portugal in a VW camper van 20 years ago, listening to Mother Earth, Fat Boy Slim, and some others I can't remember. On tapes. Yes, Alan. On your cassette deck in the VW camper. Always got to carry a pencil if you've got cassette tapes, right? Um, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to fish that out for you. Uh, join us tonight. The um, Portugal playlist. Uh, link for that in the same place as you're watching this. Um, so this evening, yeah, from 10, our radio show. Good, good evening, Portugal's, and good morning, Portugal's very own radio show. Okay, so let's have a look at this corruption story. Um, we've got a laughing emoticon. I don't know if that's a cynical laugh um, towards this idea of tackling corruption. And, of course, uh, not a problem unique 
to um, Portugal, but it would appear something, they're endeavouring to do something about it here. This is from the Portugal resident, uh, my favourite writer there, Natasha Don. Less than a day before the trial of whistleblower Rui Pinto opened in Lisbon, the Council of Ministers finally approved Portugal's nas national strategy for the combat of corruption. Uh, Gra says Eco Online, it's a, it's a package aimed at avoiding state expenditure of 18.2 billion a year, which will run from now until 2024. One of its cornerstones will be a whistleblower's charter, legally protecting people who come forwards to denounce corruption in organizations they may be involved in. And that's got to be a good thing, right? You know, we're living in, in, in crazy times, aren't we, in this world? And some, some would have it that, you know, the, the institutions are collapsing. And this may well be uh, part of it, of course. Although you might be more cynical thinking, you know, well, they have to do something about it. And it's a bit, of, what, what's the term, sh showboating or grandstanding? Um, but we'll see, we'll see, won't we? It's better that, you know, it looks like something's happening rather than nothing, right? Uh, Stresses Eco, uh, the um, online um, publication, this is not actually the case with Rui Pinto, who came by his explosive information through illicit acts, in this case, computer hacking. But Pinto is claiming whistleblower status, and he has some extremely powerful supporters behind him. Justice Minister Francisco Van Dunham alluded to the whistleblowers charter earlier this year. And I think it's good when politicians are sort of nailing their their flags, their colours to this, because I guess they have to create a higher standard for themselves, right, and a bit more accountability. So I, I'm seeing it as a good thing. I want it to be a good thing. The dossier was given to a working party, working group, which only presented its conclusions in July. Um, that could be a source of some cynicism, isn't it? You know, <laughs> the working group took ages to come up with a report, maybe. <laughs> According to ECO, or well, they wanted to be thorough. The group pointed to annual losses to the state of this 18.2 billion euros, this is a lot of money uh, through corruption and money laundering, all of which have to be paid in the end by taxpayers, of course. You know, there is no government money without taxpayers, is there? Uh, the new combat strategy will include education, or is there? You know, if governments can just print the stuff, you know, maybe we, maybe it's not the, the myth of the taxpayer. And maybe we don't have to pay tax. Maybe we can just keep printing this stuff and create universal basic income and just push the numbers around digitally. But that's a digression. The new combat strategy will include education in schools and universities to show the damages created by corruption and aim to bring private companies into line so that they are seen to be actively addressing endemic threats of mismanagement, mismanagement within them. The strategy is still to be discussed in Parliament. Oh, I see. But the fa fact that it's been approved ahead of the Roy Pinto trial is still significant. Young Mr. Pinto, meantime, is already in court and has made a short statement to affirm his whistleblowing days are over. Media sources covering the trial say he has declared, my work as a whistleblower is finished. I've never received money for what I did. I'm not a hacker. I'm not a whistleblower. I am a whistleblower. I've made a lot of important information public that otherwise would not have been known. He remains in a strange situation, however. The 31-year-old agrees. I am both a defendant and protected witness. I've been the target of a campaign of lies and defamation. I have been in prison for a year and a half. Seven months of which was spent in isolation has been very tough. Wow. I mean, he's put his life on the line for this. Um, it says reports, the security protecting Rui Pinto is on a scale never before seen in Portugal. So he has upset some people. Big time there, right? Fearing for his life, spent t t time behind bars in isolation. And I want to tell you more about this person, uh, because to me, you know, this is heroic work that uh, Roy is engaged in. Um, did you see the King's Gate? Uh, just sorry, a little bit of a contrast in the conversation in there. Didn't make it to the King's Gate. I mean, I had a very, as a wine ninja, I had a very specific mission yesterday to, um, to alight the train, get into the lanes, get into the wine bar and drink the drink, uh, which I did successfully and left without a trace. Well, just eight euros actually left behind. Um, so let's go back to um, uh, Rui uh, Pinto, which um, I know this is heavy stuff for a Monday morning, but this is what's in the news at the moment. And uh, it's what grabbed my attention. Uh, need to have another sip of tea before I tell you more. But there he is on the screen. You can have a look at this young man here. It's okay. I haven't gone anywhere. Just having a sip of tea. Oh, that's, that just must sound so horrible on the podcast. <laughs> Dead air on the podcast. But anyway, I needed that. Uh, let's go to um, 
the what what happened? I don't know if you know about this. Natasha Don again, uh, going back to the first of September, reporting on this heightened security in place as Portuguese whistleblower trial opens in Lisbon. Uh, heightened security is in place as the trial of Portuguese whistleblower Rui Pinto is due to open in Lisbon on Thursday. Concerns for thirty-one-year-old Pinto's safety are paramount. I, wow, you know he has upset some very wealthy and powerful people, as his lawyer William Borden said has said. He's even got himself. Is that that sounds like a you know a foreign brief he's got himself there as well? Maybe has had to get a, an American lawyer. Uh, thanks to Rui Pinto's actions, many investigations have been and will be initiated, revealing huge financial scandals that cripple our democracies. Up until relatively recently, the young computer genius had been derided in the Portuguese press as a hacker, but it has become increasingly clear that his investigations, albeit unauthorized, have thrown up an insidious underbelly of corruption that has managed to operate in plain sight for years. So good on you, Roy Pinto. His Luanda leaks, I mean, did you know about that? I mean, that, this is incredible. His, his Luanda leaks dossier kick-started the probe that has since seen Africa's former first daughter, Isabel dos Santos, charged with embezzling millions of dollars from Angola. And he has stated publicly that he has a lot more information on a, on a lot of other intrigue, particularly affecting Portugal. It could become one of the most important people in Portuguese history. One of his champions from the outset, former MEP Ana Gomes, widely expected to challenge President Marcelo in the upcoming presidential elections race. Oh, I didn't know about that. Has intimated that the whole system of Portuguese justice has been dancing to the tune of cash registers of a very special fund known to have Kazakhstan mafia behind it. Oh, my word. No wonder he needs protection. Thus, the trial of young Mr. Pinto, facing 90 criminal charges, promises to be explosive. International media sources, including the New York Times, Der Spiegel, CNN, Reuters and Associated Press. And of course, now the Good Morning Portugal live stream will all be vying for the 20 places reserved for the press in the courtroom. I don't think I stand a chance to you in there uh, in the courtroom on floor zero in Campus de Justicia. Uh, while many others will have to make do with listening to the proceedings via video link from a building nearby. Maybe I'll get in there. Um, shielded now under Portugal's witness protection program, Rui Pinto is expected to be delivered to the courtroom every day by police drivers who will be acutely aware of how dangerous their passenger continues to be to certain groups and individuals. His, oh, his French lawyer, okay. His French lawyer has already dubbed Rui Pinto the Edward Snowden of international corruption, who must be recognized as one of the greatest whistleblowers of the beginning of the century. Here in Portugal, folks, Ana Gomez is one of 45 personalities who have purportedly agreed to appear in court in Mr. Pinto's defense, as has Edward Snowden himself. So Snowden might fly from Russia to be in Portugal. Oh, no, he won't, will he? He'll be on video link. The strategy of the defense will clearly be to demolish all the charges against their client and secure his acquittal. Uh, PJ, the justice boss, Luis, Luis Neves, has already prepared this scenario in an interview with Diario de Noticias in June, which, in which he called for a whistleblower's charter. At the time, Neves hinted that after the trial, Rui, Rui Pinto will have a normal life in IT. <laughs> really? Um, the unanswered, does anyone have a normal life in IT, though, to be fair? The unanswered question, however, is could this happen without the young man being given a completely new identity? Natasha.don at algarveresident.com. You have excelled yourself there. I mean, I don't know if it's the same for you, but that, that gives me chills to see that we have this incredible phenomenon happening. You know, a whistleblower's charter, a, a young man there who has been so brave as to reveal all of this at great personal cost already and, and threats to his personal safety. I will be watching that uh, closely. And next I will be eating pizza um, uh, <laughs> from, from the incredible and inspiring to the, the ridiculous. Uh, oh yeah. I th offer to, to, yeah, this is a, a, a parting, parting word here. Be careful out there. Wasps, right? My landlady, Grasa, has said, be very careful. When she heard I'd been stung by a wasp, she said it wasn't one of those Asian hornets, was it? Because she got really poorly um, and had to be rushed to hospital. No, uh, I think I got stung by a native wasp. I don't know if you can see this sort of contrast of my hands. It's um, cause it's a little bit swollen there and playing havoc with the green screen. Still kind of itchy and puffy. And uh, more for me, it was once bitten twice 
stung. <laughs> I I moved, I went to I was working in the same part of the garden where I was stung last week, and they got me again. And they are talking of ninjas. These wasps are so fast. I just moved a bit of garden furniture in which I think they're living, and they, one of them flew out, stung me, and off through gloves as well. So um, yeah, slightly puffy hand. Be careful out there with the wasps. That of course, you know, there's us with our bragging rights, boasting about our wonderful lives in Portugal. Uh, of course, the other side of <laughs> of it is that there are hundreds more things that want to bite and sting you here. <laughs> I don't want to end on that rather um, painful note, but just to issue a little bit of a warning if you're out there in the garden at the moment, and perhaps, you know, they are becoming, you know, in the, it's sleepy or in the heat or whatever and a bit aggressive, I don't know what, but it got, got stung by a wasp yesterday. So be careful out there, folks. Have a super day and hopefully see you tonight on the Portugal Playlist radio show, um, where I'm looking forward to hearing all your music. Uh, as Alan has said, uh, listening to Mother Earth and Fatboy Slim driving in the camper van. What are those wonderful uh, tunes uh, that, that, that give you the, the, the nostalgia about your plans to come to Portugal? Uh, what were you listening to as you drove through the roads of Portugal for the first time, uh, the highways of Portugal through the mountains or whatever? And what have you learned since you've been here about Portuguese music or what do you continue to listen to from the old place here in Portugal? All of that on the Portugal playlist tonight uh, via Spreaker in the, in the Facebook page tonight. See you then. Word of the day today, just a final reminder, Camponesa on the screen there, C-A-M-P-O-N-E-S-A, uh, meaning rural, uh, paysan, and even serving wench sometimes in the appropriate context. Take care. Uh, beijinhos, abraços, até já, até a próxima, até amanhã. Bye for now.